Welcome to a lesson on z-scores. In this lesson, we will determine z-scores in a normal distribution and also determine a score given a z-score mean and standard deviation. A z-score describes how far a data value is above or below the mean. The units used to describe the distance above or below the mean are standard deviations. So we can calculate the z-score by taking the deviation and dividing by the standard deviation which can also be expressed as x minus mu divided by sigma, where x is the data value, mu is the mean, and sigma is the standard deviation. Let's take a look at our first example. The results of a common standardized test used in psychology research is designed so that the population mean is 130 and the standard deviation is 20. A subject earns a score of 152. What is the z-score for this raw score? Which means we're asking how many standard deviations above 130 is 152? So we know that mu, the population mean, is equal to 130. Sigma, the standard deviation, is equal to 20. And our score, x, is 152. So the z-score it's going to be equal to x minus mu divided by sigma, or 152 minus 130 divided by 20. Well, this would be 22 divided by 20, which is equal to 1.1. Notice how the z-score is positive, and this tells us that 152 is 1.1 standard deviations above the mean of 130. Let's take a look at a second example. We have the same situation, but now the population mean is 125, the standard deviation is 40, and the score is 29. Our goal is to determine the z-score. Notice how here the score is below the mean, so our z-score will be negative. So we have mu, the mean is equal to 125, sigma, the standard deviation is 40, and the score x is equal to 29. So the z-score is going to be equal to 29 minus 125 divided by 40. So we'll have what, negative 96 divided by 40, which is equal to negative 2.4. So this tells us that the score of 29 is 2.4 standard deviations below the mean of 125. Now let's take a look at a different type of question. The given information is similar. The mean is 100, the standard deviation is 40, but now we want to determine the score that corresponds to the given z-score. Then determine what percent of the data is above and below the score. Well, if we take our z-score formula and solve for x, which is the score, we would have x equals mu plus z times sigma, where the test score is equal to the mean plus the z-score times the standard deviation. So again, we know mu equals 100, and we know sigma equals 40, and we know for part a, the z-score is 1.5. So we have x equals the mean of 100 plus the z-score, which is 1.5, times the standard deviation of 40. Well, 1.5 times 40 would be 60. 100 plus 60 equals 160, which would be the test score if the z-score is 1.5, which again tells us that 160 is 1.5 standard deviations above the mean of 100. But now we're also asked to determine what percent of the data is above or below this score. There are several ways to do this using technology, but for this lesson, we'll go old school and use a z-score table. And there are typically two types of z-score tables. The cumulative table gives us the percent of data below a particular z-score, and the zero through z table gives us the percent of data between the mean and a particular z-score. So for our first example, 
since we have a z-score of 1.5, let's use a cumulative table. So we'll look for a 1.5 in the cumulative table. So go down the first column, look for 1.5, which is here. Notice if we go across this row, this gives us a second decimal place for the z-score. Since we have 1.5 or 1.50, notice how the cumulative value is 0 0.9332, which means 93.32% of the data would be below the z-score of 1.5. So we can say that 93.32% of the scores will be below 160, which means 100% minus 93.32, or 6.68% of the scores would be above 160. Let's take a look at our second example. The information is the same, but now the z-score is negative 2.1. So the score that corresponds to this z-score would be x equals 100, and then minus 2.1 times the standard deviation of 40, which gives a score of 16. Now we'll determine the percent of data that is above and below the score of 16. This will be slightly more challenging because our z-score table only gives positive values of z. So we'll have to use the symmetry of the normal curve to determine our percentages. Again, we have a choice of the cumulative table or the zero through z table. And just to show the difference, in this example, let's use the zero through z table. So we're not going to find a negative 2.1, so we'll have to use positive 2.1. Notice how if z is positive 2.1, the percent of the data that would be between the mean and z equals 2.1 would be approximately 48.21% here. So that would give us the percent of data that's actually, let's say, in this region here. But we're looking for the percent of data that's above and below the score that corresponds to z equals negative 2.1. But if 48.21% of the data is in this region here, then 48.21% of the data would also be in this region here because of the symmetry. And we also know that 50% of the data would be above the mean, so the amount of data in this region here all the way to the end would be 50%, and therefore 48.21 plus 50% would be 98.21% of the data would have to be above the z-score of negative 2.1. So 98.21% of the scores will be above 16, which means 100% minus 98.21, or 1.79%, of the scores will be below 16. So sometimes using the tables, it can be a little trickier if the z-score is negative. I hope you found this helpful.